This video will be about crude oil and more specifically the differences between Brent and WTI crude. Uh, Brent and WTI are the major trading classifications of sweet light crude oil that both serve as major benchmark prices for the purchases and trading of oil worldwide. The video will also cover the different metrics that measure the quality of crude oil as well as the importance of Brent and WTI to the futures market and oil trading, commodity trading worldwide. Without further ado, let's get started. Before we get into the differences between Brent and WTI, we should probably go through some basic metrics um, on crude oil, what measures the quality of crude oil versus another one, um, you may have heard of the terms light or heavy crude oil. We'll go through that first. What's the difference between the two? Well, the difference between the two is the liquid density to water. You may have heard of the term light crude oil. This refers to oil of a lower density. The lower the density, the easier it is for it to be refined into gasoline or diesel fuel. Conversely, the higher the density or heavier the oil is, the harder it is to be, to be refined. Generally speaking, light crude oil tends to fetch a premium in the oil futures market. As you might imagine, it is easier to refine and also produces a greater amount of gasoline or diesel fuel. Heavier crude oils are cheaper because they aren't as easily refined, needing more advanced methods and technologies for refinement. One way to think of the density of crude oil is whether or not it will float on water. A lighter crude oil, as you might imagine, will float on water whereas a heavier crude oil, also as you might imagine, will sink in water. Now one way to measure the density of crude oil is through what is called the American Petroleum Institute gravity, or the API gravity, which is a measurement of the density of oil or petroleum products. This number will normally fall somewhere between 10 and 70, with a lighter crude oil uh, having a higher API gravity, and a heavier crude oil actually having a lower API gravity measurement. Now that we've gone through the difference between light and heavy crude oil, we can talk about the difference between sweet and sour crude oil. Uh, these two terms basically refer to the sulfur content of oil, uh, which is measured against the benchmark of 0.5%. Anything higher than the half percent is considered sour, and anything lower is considered sweet. Sweet crude oil, similar to light crude oil, tends to command a premium in the futures market basically because it's easier to refine into finished petroleum products. Now that we've gone through the difference between light and heavy crude oil and sweet and sour crude oil, we can put all that together and talk about the difference between sweet, light crude oil and heavy, sour crude oil. So at one end of the spectrum, we have sweet light crude oil, the holy grail, so to speak. And at the other end of the spectrum, we have heavy sour crude oil. And somewhere in the middle, there are medium grades. Sweet light crude oil has a lower liquid density to water and a lower sulfur content, while heavy sour crude oil has a higher liquid density to water and a higher sulfur content. The light and sweet variety is preferred to its heavy and sour counterpart because of the amount of processing necessary to remove impurities for refinement into fuels such as gasoline and diesel and other finished petroleum products. However, being that light and sweet crude oil is of a higher quality, it will probably cost you a pretty penny in the futures market. Now that we've gone through the different metrics that measure the quality of crude oil, we can talk about how crude oil is processed and used. Crude oil is used to produce various types of fuel, possibly the most notorious of which being gasoline. But how does it go from being raw crude oil to the gasoline that you put in your car? After crude oil is extracted, it is transported to refineries where it is converted into finished petroleum products such as gasoline and diesel. Without getting too technical, refinement generally involves a distillation process to purify the oil. This is done basically by heating and cooling the oil to separate the useful stuff, the fuel, from the not-so-useful. However, more sophisticated processes and equipment must be used to determine how much of each barrel of crude oil should be refined into the different types of fuel that the market demands. 
What this does is minimize the production of lower value fuel types to maximize the production of higher value fuel. According to the University of Delaware, around 50% of each barrel of crude oil is converted into gasoline. 40% is converted into middle distillates, such as diesel fuel, heating oil, kerosene, and jet fuel, while only 10% is refined into what they refer to as residual fuel oil. This residual fuel oil is of the lowest value and is used to, among other things, power large ocean-going ships and freighters. Having gone through all of that, now we can finally get to Brent and WTI crude oil. Global production and consumption of crude oil has continually increased over the years. According to IEA statistics, more than 90 million barrels are produced and consumed globally per day. As the demand for crude oil increases, the more crude oil is produced and traded all over the world. However, all of these different crude oils need some kind of benchmark on which to base their pricing structures. Brent and WTI are two major trading classifications of crude oil and serve as the two major benchmarks for crude oil pricing globally. However, Brent is being adopted more and more as the preferred benchmark. According to ICE Futures, it is estimated that 60% of the world's traded oil is priced off of Brent. Before getting into Brent and WTI's importance to commodity trading in the futures market, we should take a look at the differences between the two. Brent crude oil, originally referred to the oil extracted from the Brent oil fields located in the North Sea off the coast of the UK. However, for various reasons related to commodity trading in the futures market, Brent now refers to four different crude oil grades that are extracted from various wells located in the North Sea. These four grades are Brent Blend, Forties Blend, Osberg, and Echo Fisk. The mixing of the four oil grades actually made Brent a heavier oil, although it is still considered to be relatively light and low in sulfur. While Brent is relatively heavier than it was in the past, it is still ideal for oil refinement, and the fact that it is waterborne from oil fields near the coast of the UK makes it all the more attractive. Transportation of Brent is easier and less costly due to the location of its extraction sites. The oil is transported after extraction to a floating vessel near the oil platform called an FPSO, where it can be produced and stored. This makes Brent crude oil very accessible for means of transportation. The oil can be offloaded from the FPSO directly onto oil tankers and transported across the world by sea. It can also be sent via pipeline to refineries and storage facilities on the coast of the UK in places like Solomvo Gas Terminal in the Shetland Islands or St. Fergus Gas Terminal near Aberdeen. Although it may not seem like it, transportation plays a major part in pricing of crude oil as well as in the adoption of Brent as the major oil benchmark price setter globally. WTI Crude Oil or West Texas Intermediate is the other major global benchmark oil for price setting and is actually a better quality than Brent. It is extracted from wells located in the interior of the United States in places like Louisiana, Texas, and North Dakota, and is considered to be very sweet and very light. Although WTI is sweeter and lighter than Brent, a major drawback is that it is a landlocked crude oil, meaning that transportation is more expensive and more involved than it would be for a waterborne oil such as Brent. WTI is extracted across the U.S. and then sent via pipeline to Cushing, Oklahoma, where it is stored. Then it must further rely on the capacity of pipelines or rail to get it to refinement sites in the Gulf Coast region, so that after refinement, it may finally be transported across the world or wherever its final destination may be. Brent, on the other hand, as mentioned earlier, is waterborne and therefore is much easier to transport. Although it has been the leading global benchmark crude oil in the past, many analysts believe that for all the quality that WTI has in terms of density and sulfur content, the fact that it is extracted from land undermines its potential to be the leading global benchmark crude oil. As advertised earlier, we can now start talking about the role of WTI and Brent in the futures market. There was a time when crude oils were traded based on the spot price. That the spot price is the current price at which securities and commodities and things of this nature, in this case crude oil, can be bought or sold at a given time and place. However, the volatility of crude oil prices necessitated some kind of solution to minimize the risk of the ever-changing prices, which came in the form of futures. As was mentioned earlier, these futures are tied to benchmark oils, whose prices are traditionally less volatile, allowing traders to lock in a price to buy or sell accrued months or possibly even years in advance. 
This is where Brent and WTI come in. WTI and Brent were both, for many years, globally accepted as benchmark oil prices, and their prices were essentially the same. However, the prices of the two crude oils began to diverge in 2011. Although the prices seem to have converged once again beginning in late 2014, the 2011 divergence may have contributed to the widespread adoption of Brent as the global benchmark oil price. The divergence in the prices between Brent and WTI has been attributed to many things. Some believe it was due to the gradual depletion of Brent oil in the North Sea, while others have cited the oversupply of WTI oil in the U.S. as the culprit. Oil production from Canada has rapidly increased, while the production of WTI has significantly exceeded the capacity of oil pipelines for transportation, especially to the East Coast which prompted Brent to be adopted as the benchmark for oil trading markets, even on the east coasts of the U.S. and Canada, right in WTI's backyard. WTI is now being transported by rail, which is significantly more expensive than by pipeline. All this may have made Brent's waterborne oil more attractive to investors, prompting pricing hubs to adopt Brent as the benchmark, while at the same time Brent's price rose and WTI's price stagnated. Whatever it was that led to the price divergence and the adoption of Brent in the last few years as the preferred crude oil for pricing is debatable, but the fact that it comes from various drilling sites in the North Sea, and as more global crude prices are pegged to Brent, it may just be a case of Brent being seen as a more reliable indicator of global crude oil prices. In general, many different factors can move the price of commodities, especially oil, such as currency movements, variations in regional demand, geopolitical concerns, and politics, among many other factors. Although slightly off-topic from Brent and WTI, a good anecdote to demonstrate how the price of oil is highly influenced by supply can be seen in what has been happening to global oil prices over the last year, as an unprecedented global oil glut has impacted OPEC oil prices significantly. On the 20th of January, the OPEC oil basket price fell to 22.5 US dollars per barrel, marking the lowest price since 2002 and a sharp 47.8% drop on an annual basis. Although Russia and Saudi Arabia have finally come to an agreement to freeze oil production at January levels, and we've actually seen a slight recovery in oil prices since then, there are doubts as to whether an oil production freeze will have a significant enough impact to stabilize prices and prop them up in the long term, especially after Saudi Arabian Minister of Petroleum and Mineral Resources Ali al Naimi declared that oil production cuts won't happen. Oil production in the United States is showing no signs of abating, and Iran's reintegration to the world economy will likely result in even more oil flooding the market. The oversupply of oil also looks likely to continue due to China's economic slowdown, along with uncertainty over the health of the global economy. This points to a continued trend of low demand for oil in the future, meaning consumption will likely continue to wane. The oversupply of crude oil, as well as low crude oil prices, look as if they are going to stick around for the foreseeable future. So there you have it, everybody. You have just completed a crash course on crude oil. You now know more about the metrics that measure the quality of crude oil. You now also know the difference between Brent and WTI, the two major benchmarks for oil pricing globally. And you've learned a bit more about oil commodity trading and the futures market. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave a comment. If you liked the video, subscribe to our channel. Focus Economics has also recently launched a brand new commodities consensus forecast report. There is a link you can click on to get a free sample of that report in the description, so definitely check that out. If you would like to know more about commodities, keep up to date on the latest news related to commodities of all types, such as metals, agricultural, and energy commodities, there are some other links you might find useful in the description as well. Thanks for watching, and take care.